CataractCoach.com. This is why I just need one single chop. So for my average cataract case, just one chop is really enough. So let me show you the case. The first thing we're going to look at is the nuclear density. So this patient has a typical nuclear density for our Beverly Hills Clinic. And if you look here, that's about 2 plus nuclear sclerosis, maybe 3 plus. And this technique of just one chop works great for that density of nucleus. And the second thing is the rexus. In order to get a hemineucleus out of the bag, we need to have a sufficiently large capsule rexus. Now, if you make a small rexus, let's say four and a half millimeters in diameter, you can divide the nucleus or chop it into quadrants and take each quadrant out of that smaller capsule rexus. But if you want to get a whole hemineucleus up, you need to have about a five millimeter rexus, like we just tore there. And that's going to allow us to bring a hemineuclear fragment out of the bag, a whole half. So now hydrodysection section is important to free up that nucleus. We'll tap the center there. And you really want this nucleus to be able to spin a little bit. So we'll try spin it. And there it is. It's got good spin to it. So you know it's free from the capsular bag attachments. Now here comes the one chop. We'll put a little bit of tiny aliquot of dispersive viscoelastic in that central cornea. Now I'm going to go and bevel down. I'm going to do a combo chop. And we're going to split the nucleus in two halves right away. So phaco probe goes in, chopper goes in. And now look as the chopper will help split the nucleus. And now the chopper's holding the one hemineucleus out of the way to create more of a gap. As the phaco probe in the vacuum level brings up the second uh, piece. So one nuclear half is in the bag still. That's on the left side of your screen. And the one that the phaco probe is attacking now is kind of at the iris plane. And you can see you don't have to do much more chopping. You can simply... Uh, occlude the tip, use the ultrasonic energy to help break it up, and just like that, one nuclear half is gone. Second half comes up out of the bag, and same concept, no further sub-chopping is really needed. So just one chop is all it takes, and just like that, the nucleus is out, and we're done. So that's kind of the trick behind it. So good. Two to three plus NS, check. Second thing, it's going to be the rex, it's got to be five millimeters. And third thing is, after I do that one chop and separate the two halves, the chopper pulls the one hemineuclear piece out of the way to create more of a gap that allows me to bring up the other hemineuclear half using the vacuum of the phaco probe. And once that's gone, then it's very easy to remove the other piece and proceed from there. So that looks great. Now cleaning up the rest of the, the capsule here, taking out the cortex, a little bit of capture bag polishing. And again, this makes for a very efficient surgery. You can see little black ink marks on the cornea, the limbus. Those are at the cardinal meridians. And if you look carefully, there are already some marks on the cornea and the corneal epithelium that show us where we're going to line up this toric lens. And so delivering a, the lens is going to be our next step. Capsule bag is full of dispersed or cohesive viscoelastic. Here you go. Here comes that lens being delivered. It's going to be a single piece acrylic lens here. This is an EDOF lens, extended depth of focus. This would be an Alcon Vividi lens. And you can see it's also the toric version, so we'll get that lined up. See the toric marks at the haptic optic junction. And I'm going to rotate that a little bit. And our marks on the cornea are just about at the 90 degree meridian. So that's where we're going to line the lens up. So, of course, first removing this glass from behind the lens. You want that posterior aspect of the optic to sit directly on the posterior capsule. No viscoelastic, which is going to be slippery between the two. And now I can clean up more of the anterior capsule rim now that I have the IOL weighing down and holding the posterior capsule away. Now it becomes a lot easier. Now you can see there are the marks on the cornea, very close to those two horizontal black marks. And we'll rotate those uh, um, lens haptics around so we can line up the three dots of the toric eye well with the three dots on each side at the cornea. And you can see that's a really good alignment there for both the marks. And then even the Purkinje images are beautifully centered in the middle of that uh, special optic. This is an optic that has a beam shaping element in the center. And we want that lined up with the first and fourth Purkinje images. Very slight hydration of the main incision. You don't need a whole lot of it. Now, look how the rexus overlaps and captures the optic. So for sure, that's about a five millimeter caps rexus. And again, judging by the optic size, that's six. And you can see it's a beautiful overlap for 360. So everything here looks pretty good. At the end of the case here, how about some Triamcinolone? 
That's about half to one milligram, preserved free. And then we'll put some moxifloxin as well in the anterior chamber. That's preserved free for end of the mice prevention. And then finally some balanced salt solution, get the pressure where we want it. And we can check that and everything looks great. Sealing up the incision here at the end. They've already been hydrated. We can get the pressure where we want it. And then we'll put a wax cell here with some titracaine and then try a dry wax cell. And those are my secrets and how I can do just one chop for a routine cataract case.